Uh, all right, Simeon, you ready to record? Yeah, I think so. I've got my my juice and my Pepsi. Is it's it be a long night? <laughs> it's gonna so. be a long. It's gonna be a long night. Well, I've got my my uh my blue dolphin on the rocks here, and I'm ready to hit it. So uh, let's just do it, shall we? Um, do the countdown. Three, two, one. <laughs> Well, gee willikers, who could be coming in at this uh, this time of the night? What in the world? Well, better go get the door, Simeon. Oh, okay. Well, chill. Hello? Who's there? <laughs> Who's, who in the world? <laughs> Merry Christmas! What? Chris? Hey, Calder, what's going on? What are you up to tonight? I came to visit you. Well, well actually, good, goodness gracious, you popped in at a real great time. We were just about to record the latest episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks. Oh, heck yeah. Do you, would you mind? Can yes. I be in it? Absolutely, Chris. Get on in here. Can I announce it? Can I say it? Is, is it a little bit back to what we used to do? Oh, let's do the honors. Take us away, man. Heck yeah. All right. I'm Chris Britton. This is Dial H for Hero Clicks, episode 290. Let's go. <laughs> I was gonna see if he knew the read-in, and I was I was gonna wait because the classic is, "Welcome back, Dial H Hero Clicks. Let's go." It plays, and then, <laughs> and I just forgot the cool stuff reading. Hey guys, welcome back to a very special episode <laughs> of Dial H Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. Let's go. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. As you've already seen, we have a special guest in studio today. Chris Britton, the old host of Dial H for Hero Clicks, has popped on back for this most merry of Christmas holiday episodes. Thank you so much for coming back, Chris. Absolutely. I had some time off. I'm currently on holiday block leave, as most of you guys out there know. If you don't have uh, or if you hadn't been listening to Dial H before now, if you're a newer listener, uh, you can go back and listen to us. Calder and I had years of entertainment that we put out together. But uh, I joined the military and I got some free time and I came back and I wouldn't rather do anything else than hang out with one of my best friends. So I'm glad I'm here. All right, fantastic. I'm just I'm glad that you came up to the door pre mic'd, you know, when you knocked and everything. It really helped. Already ready to go. Super professional. Yeah, we did did you could you tell that when he opened the door I just stood there and we we locked eyes at each other. We were just staring. That's why there was so much dead silence. That's the reason. Um but I brought you guys Christmas presents. That was the whole reason for coming it definitely was not staged that i was going to be on tonight's episode so what (laughs) what a great happen we were recording yesterday so yeah Yeah. (laughs) what do you what did you guys want for christmas i've got two presents here calder what did you want you know i would just love nothing more than to play one of my all-time favorite games on the podcast bad samaritan oh wow that's exactly what i got you simeon (laughs) (laughs) simeon what did you want you know, I just want to I want to win at Bad Samaritan. That's what I've always wanted for Christmas. Oh, that's what I was getting you next year. This is actually just cool. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I got a rock. All right. Well, yeah, well, I, I mean, it's a, useful, it's a useful rock. It's, it is going to be a very <laughs> useful rock. Uh, but like how we like to start every episode, for the most part, is what made us happy this week. Uh, Chris, why don't you go ahead and start? Oh, me already? Okay, uh, so I have obviously been gone for five months. Uh, it is so nice to be out of that environment for a couple of weeks. That's like, you guys don't even know how happy I am to just have a little bit of free time to wind down and stuff like that. Um, I get to see my wife. And it's been amazing. She let me open my Christmas present tonight, which was really, really um, heartwarming. It is a custom-made painting of us as Pokemon characters. And then there's Pokemon in it, and it's like our favorite Pokemon. And we're just together. It's actually really cool, really sweet. Uh, So that's really neat. 
Um, and then also I get to go actually see my family, which I have not gotten to do for five months. So that's also very, very, very cool. Right on. Simeon, you got something made you happy this week, my man. Made me happy was I did a murder mystery party. Ooh. So we actually did this. This is the second year that we've done it. Last year was Christmas theme. This year we decided to forego the Christmas theme, but we kept the murder and we kept the mystery. And uh, it was 1920s, like murder at the juice joint, prohibition era kind of stuff. And I got to play the mayor, Mayor Ooh. Biggs. With two G's. I can't imagine uh, anyone would ever <laughs> elect you on purpose. You know, I don't think I was going to make re-election, but I did win Best Actor. Ooh. So, <laughs> community vote. I don't is, know how. Is Mayor Big with two G's thick with two C's? These are the real questions. <laughs> you know, I didn't I didn't dress him that way. Uh, so. Man, you missed an opportunity here. That's all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. I really did think about, like, if I had a bigger suit, I totally would have, like, stuffed it and <laughs> tried to do, like, the, like, Cool Hand Luke accent the whole night, but... Oh, jeez. Yeah. You truly you truly missed a beautiful opportunity. But was it Professor Plum in the, in the kitchen with the candlestick? It was uh, Police Chief... Uh, I can't remember his name now. It was, like, everything was, like, an alliteration, so it was, like, Chief Corby and... Oh. Uh, notorious nick and uh you know stuff like that hollywood hal like weird names uh but it was the police chief uh he murdered notorious nick so that he could keep his job as police chief and nobody guessed it so hmm. out of out of 19 people so there was 20 <laughs> yeah that... the, the one guy was like he was just super sly i think he might have actually killed someone in real life because he got away with murder that night hmm. so Right on. Seems like it wasn't his first try. Well, what made me happy this week? I went holiday shopping with my father in the big old city this weekend, and we stopped by. Have you ever been to like a Sears or a Shields? They normally have a big, big buck hunter game, and it was. It just felt really good to absolutely annihilate the old man in Big Buck Hunter. It was. It wasn't even <laughs> close. It was so <laughs> awesome. Like seriously, if you think uh, this is probably a really redneck sounding thing, but if you think you're good at Big Buck Hunter should play me if it's one of those two player big buck hunters i will i will destroy you no questions asked i really love big buck hunter and i love, <laughs> love being able to play it anyways that's what made me happy this week moving on in the episode let's go ahead and get right on into the news WizKids has a Twitter, and they finally decided to start using it and showing some more important things on it, which I really appreciate about them. We have the only previews and news for this week, I believe, and that all happened today, December 23rd, on uh, WizKids' Twitter. They posted three pictures so far, uh, each of just sculpts, no cards, no information, no dials. Uh, but just of just sculpts that we can all assume are going to be happening. Two we can guarantee are going to be happening in HeroClix. One we just assume is going to be happening in HeroClix. Simeon, which one of these do you want to talk about? And I'll go ahead and let you start. Uh, I'll go with the Plastic Man one. Ooh. Um, so it's not the most exciting post that they made. Uh, it was the first one, I believe, that they made. But um, we got some weird kind of like terrain objects not really sure what they are there's no base but we've got what looks like a traffic cone a like barricade and a mailbox and they all they're clearly plastic man like hiding as these objects um i want to say these aren't sculpts these aren't going to be on bases i wonder if it's going to be like a special like if they're each going to be like a special object so like maybe there's going to be a new plastic man for like the animated series and he'll come with like these special objects or maybe there will be no you know plastic man and these will just be in the set randomly um either way it's just very intriguing there's a lot going on with zero information uh i can't imagine what they would do plasticity i don't know give someone holding it shape change i mean i don't i don't know so what do you do with a plastic mailbox their tweet actually says, we were expecting some Plastic Man samples today, but instead we got these. 
any guesses on what's going on, Heroclix fans? And then, and you guys are going to have to forgive me from now for the rest of the episode because I don't know what your guys' ranks are anymore. I assume you're all super fans at this point because I've been gone for seven years. Um, but super fan Christian Bogan said, Plastic Man is objects. My hope is we get a Plastic Man that can morph into these objects and can be thrown by a teammate. Then Plastic Man reverts back to a normal dial form and he can make a close combat attack. I love this idea. Let's do that. that Let's go there. Great. So yeah. out of the out of the three, can we all agree the mailbox is like by far the worst? Like they totally missed the printing <laughs> on it or whatever. Like it's got this really <laughs> the bad mailbox grin. The, it's the worst coloring. Small. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's it so looks bad. like a three D printing of just a mailbox, and then they stuck a little plastic man face sticker on the side. Yeah. It looks so bad. <laughs> but uh, I love the barricade. The barricade's got to be my favorite in terms of look. And then the traffic cone thing. Sure is Barrier it. and PD. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what, <laughs> what, what, what do the traffic cone and the barricade have the PD team ability? <laughs> <laughs> They're what? objects, but they can use team ability. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm starting a new trend. I don't know. I think, yeah, I think if... Uh, if he's got something on his dial that lets him turn into these and then turn back to like an actual hero clicks figure, that'd be super sweet. Um, but we, yeah, never seen anything like this in hero clicks before. Um, so I have no clue. We, I mean, we've seen a plastic man mailbox before, but that's as close as we've gotten to what we see here. Right. Which was actually, quite honestly, the coolest plastic man ever made was the mailbox one. So, I'm excited to see a barricade in a traffic cone. That's pretty sweet as well. <laughs> just, it's, it's just so dumb. Traffic cone ones. <laughs> uh, oh, but right on. Moving on, we have... Now, this is what I'm really excited for. Uh, they showed a sculpt of the icon, the legend, Sting. Oh, this looks so great. Well, it looks kind of great. It could have been a better sculpt. I'm not going to lie. He looks like he's kind of winding up in like mid-jump for a Stinger Splash sort of deal looks a little weird i'm not gonna lie but uh i love how clean the scorpion came out in this test and i think with what they can do for face painting wise i think they got as close as they possibly could like for for whiz kids uh, i'll take this this is fine it's just the confirmation and the fact that he's the first confirmed figure we have for wave two of wwe makes me really happy I'm super excited. Little bummed there's no bat. I like that they decided not to just go with him standing there statically with, like, the trench coat. He's got more motion. There's a bit more going on. But just the fact that Sting is, is already confirmed has me so hyped for the next WWE set. What do you guys think? That's a very solid figure to start off with the announcement. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, they could have started off with some other people that people would have been, like, very less excited Four, but then they started out with Sting, and I'm like, even I was kind of hyped. Now, I missed the last set, but this is really cool. So, kudos, WizKids. Well, no, what's crazy is, like, we technically didn't have, like, it was pretty much locked in for a Series 2, but we didn't really have, like, an actual, like, physical solid confirmation until now. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's it's weird that even with like showing him, they didn't say like series two, like you know. Yeah. I mean, clearly it's going to be series two, but they didn't say anything about it. Um, yeah, I love the figure. Um, I agree that he could be a little bit like more dynamic, but maybe it's just like a weird angle. I don't know. That's what I'm going to go with. All right, right on. But I am still. Way too crazy excited for this. Thank you, WizKids, for getting me hook, line, and sinker. Just reeling me in with this. Simeon, let us... Give us the last piece of WizKids Twitter news here. Hook, line, and stinger? Is that stinger. what you said? Ooh, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad, it's good. All right, so the, the last thing... They just got it in under the, like, under the minute, you know. They saw that we were about to record and they're like oh better slip this one in so that they can see it we they got actually passed hold. me they passed me on the way to you guys on the <laughs> oh, street so yeah it was really weird i was like it's justin like, zaran what are you doing here he's like here <laughs> take this information to the podcast our favorite podcast for here clicks related news the only one we listen to yeah so we got a new master mold um he is bigger than a two by two 
I believe they call this a three by six space. Uh, I'm I can't tell exactly <laughs> from the photo, but I'm pretty sure. So the same size as the old master mold, although this one's not sitting in his fancy chair. He's like climbing out of the ground, like he's resurrected master mold. Um, looks like it's from the animated series. Other than that, no other information. I also really love how in the background we have a half awake Kenny Pena just like living. I just, it looks like Kenny. It might be someone else, but like he's just. No, like, I, I believe you're right. Yeah. <laughs> he's I'm like, pretty you have sure no idea Kenny. they're taking a picture, and it's just like, uh huh. It's great. No, I'm so excited for a Master Mold. Hopefully, this is kind of a precursor to maybe a more cosmic style guy on a bigger base. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying that'd be really cool. <laughs> That's my greatest uh, like hope from seeing this is like sweet they dedicated themselves to designing something that's not a two by two if there's a figure that deserves to be on something bigger than a two by two and we know is like upcoming it's gotta be galactus Mm -hmm. oh by the way so i didn't know about that news obviously and then all of a sudden i saw like i was i was scrolling back through uh dial h's twitter feed you know, to try and catch up on news as fast as I could. And I saw that announcement, and I was like, oh, my God, I, I love Galactus. As you guys probably know, if you've been listening to the podcast for a very long time, I always keep my Galactus within arm's reach of me as I record because he gives me strength to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, I don't know. What, what do you think um, between... So, like, let's say Fantastic Four set comes out, and let's say it's a, like, five-figure booster, but it comes with a super booster. Do you think that's more likely, or do you think it's more likely these are going to be, like, convention pieces or, like, prize pieces? I would want it to be a super booster set, because it's been a while since we got Thor, and that'd be awesome. (laughs) Like, just big colossals. But uh, I think it's more likely these guys are going to be, like, uh, con exclusives. In my opinion, I think it's more likely they're con exclusives. You're probably right. I'm going to hold my hopes out for the other option, though, because Super Booster sets have historically always been really cool to me because one of my favorite things about Hero Clicks are the enormous colossal figures. The 2x2s are cool. I like them a lot. But there's, you know, there's no substitute for a Fin Fang Foom also right next to me or the Serpent. <laughs> like, like th- they're so cool. They make this game amazing. Oh, More yeah. super boosters. We need those. That need size. My life. <clears throat> when those well, huge dials, it's like you don't know how long they like, how many like clicks of life they have because they've got like six dials. But you know that a two by two, like at most, has like twenty five. I think I don't know. That doesn't matter. You know, I was <clears throat> doesn't matter. I was anymore. thinking about this in a weird way. Colossals with the multiple dials like that were the first stop clicks ever because. That's how they function. If you annihilate a dial, right? Say you're on the last click of dial one. You can hit it for seven damage. It just kills that dial. You start on the next dial. It doesn't take any more damage. So it's like a stop click on the top of the next dial. And I was like, oh, man, this is amazing. (laughs) You you don't think about it like that, but then you're like, oh, yeah, my Colossal has three stop clicks. That's cool. Or two stop clicks at least. For sure, yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> I've never, I've never even like played against like a colossal, so I wouldn't even really. I've never realized that beautiful pain, which is nice. Oh man, it's okay. I'm gonna bring I'm okay OG Galactus to like your like happy fun time game. Oh and sure. Just for I don't know, you. We never play over 500, so I don't know how you're gonna play OG Galactus to any happy fun time game. I'll just lie. I'll pay off the judge. I know him. (laughs) We all know him. (laughs) I know the judge. All right. I know he likes he likes money, so I'll do that. (laughs) Okay. Anyways, moving (laughs) moving on to our next segment. Since we're done with news, Chris, why don't you go ahead and uh, let's go dig in, shall we? Oh well, yeah. Let's get a little bit dirty. This is called Hidden Gym. But wait, wow, that looks like a diamond. Okay, so it's been a minute since I've done this, and I'm really glad to jump back to it. Uh, And this, if this is the first time you've ever tuned into Dial H and heard about Hidden Gym, we like to go back, look at a figure that didn't really pop out in a set, 
just because it was overshadowed by anything that was in the set that may be meta or anything like that. Just just for fun, you know, something that's pretty good or at least decent. You might want to play it, uh, but no one was talking about it. And since we got the information, or at least that picture with the Sentinels earlier today, just a few hours ago, I was, I was looking at the X-Men set, and I decided I wanted to talk about number 007 Bolivar Trask. Real short, quick character to talk about just because he's only 35 points and he, he's like kind of a one-trick pony. But you're going to have your your Master Mold and your other Sentinels, which are colossal, they're going to be able to carry around this character. Why would you want to carry around this character? Well, one, he is keyworded Sentinel. The old Mastermind, if you did not know, he's not keyworded Sentinel. That's, that keyword did not exist back then. Uh, so I'm assuming that the new one will you're going to want to carry around something, right? You can't carry around the other Colossals with your Master Mold, but Bolivar, Bolivar Trask, what does he do? Um, he has a trait called Stoking Mutant Hysteria, Fear-Mongering. Leadership. All right, already you're carrying around a 35-point character that can pull off tokens off of your Master Mold, which is going to be dumb, so that's awesome. But he does other stuff, too. When Bolivar Trask uses it and succeeds, instead of normal effects you may generate a Friends of Humanity. All right, that's cool. You you might pop out these, like, 10-point little characters, and you get a roll for them, and part of the fun of this game is rolling as much as you can. You know, it's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's throw some more stuff around. So if your Master Mold doesn't have any action tokens, you might want to be throwing out these Friends of Humanity. That's cool as well. Uh, but if they do have action tokens, you're leader shipping them off, which is great. And then the last thing, which is probably one of the coolest things about this, is he has he's four clicks long for 35 points all four clicks he has a special damage power he it is called creator of the sentinel initiative it gives him support as free but only to target characters with either the sentinel or the robot keyword so yeah it's a free action you could even be based with master mold and decide like oh we need to like dip out real quick pick up your ball over trask Run a few spaces away so you're not basing anybody. Drop him right next to you. Free action. Support your master mold. Heal him back up. This is going to be a really, really great supporting piece for that Sentinel keyword, especially with Sentinels that are really, really high point value. You got your Tri Sentinel. It also could very much benefit from this. Just so any one of those like colossal figures that can carry this dude around, really cool. So that's uh, what I found is something i thought you guys might want to think about there out there in podcast land if you're of the mind to play sentinel right on sentinel is such a crazy strong keyword all of a sudden like you gotta have bali 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 trask on that team you know what i'm saying i don't know anyone that plays tri sentinel though i don't know if he's good enough to get like top eight at worlds maybe no it's probably know. it sounds like a terrible team tri sentinels <laughs> 30 points yeah. for one click? Ugh, gar- garbage. Ugh. <laughs> Imagine being the kind are, of person who he? would play that. Q-Prime? So silly. <sighs> so laughable. No, I <laughs> I actually, you know, with this new set, I pulled out my old Master Mold, um, and we did play him with all the new Sentinel options, because prior to this like latest set, this uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga, we didn't have a ton of cheap sentinels and then all of a sudden you know we had like stealth sentinel we had the generic sentinel we had sentinel one we had you know just well of course tri sentinel was like the most busted one you could call out um and so we played him and it ended up being this like really long game and towards the end like all the x-men teams that like were trying to team up against him were basically just like defeated and we realized that we hadn't even attacked master mold yet we had just been like clearing sentinels out the whole game and we were all just kind of like oh we're done like <laughs> there's no point it's over the mutants you, lost you guys realize that you know Justin Safer has the sentinel keyword as well oh, so yeah. oh, that's pretty stupid so I, all I'm saying is you're going to get this master mold which I assume is going to be dumb with you know the power creep that does clearly exist in this game so this master mold is going to be dumb you got your Justin Safer. You got your Bolivar Trask. That's a grand total of 75 points right there for your supporting pieces. And you can just do stuff with them. Like, it's, it's going to be so stupid. 
<laughs> yeah. No, I'd love to see this new Master Mold have like a... I mean, of course he's going to have some sort of bring-in Sentinel power. Uh, that's like a given. That's kind of like... He's like a factory. That's like a big thing. But no, if he has like a 13, 14 attack top dial, like, you know, no idea what his point values will be. But if he if he does have like a crazy like top dial, it'll be interesting to see if we can actually take him down in like a boss battle scenario i can't wait to get him i can't wait to see more information on him right on well i think that wraps that up i'd say we go ahead and start the game that has been sweeping the nation and get a little bad play some bad samaritan heck yeah here we go All right, the game that's sweeping the nation, you say, what is that? Of course it's Bad Samaritan. You already knew that. Here's how it's played if you've never tuned into Dial H. I have chosen three modern age figures. They're all in front of me, and we're going to go one at a time. In front of me is also a list of clues, numbered 1 through 20, and Calder totally remembered to get a random number generator to get from 1 to 20. He knows because he's a professional, ladies and gentlemen, a professional. He's going to give me a <laughs> – he's going to yeah, give he- me – a number between 1 and 20. I'm going to give them the associated clue. Uh, they're going to get one guess per round. There are three rounds per character. So if they get a right answer, they're going to give me that guess. I'm going to tell them if it's right or wrong. A right answer sounds like this. A wrong answer sounds like this. And uh, eventually I'll probably this other sound cue in here just because I think it's funny. And probably other people may get nostalgic about it. So... <laughs> Ah, uh, these two already know what it is. There's someone out there. They're good. They're gonna be like, ah, oh, this guy. All right. So, are you guys ready to go? Yeah. Okay. The, I believe well, so. First, the first clue is gonna be number four. Number four. Number four is set number, and the set number is fifty-four. Ooh, that's super rare area chase in a smaller set. <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna super rare. I'm, um, go I'm with having my a... uh, my girl Cassandra Nova just because she's the first super rare that comes Ooh. to mind. I do think that might be super rare. I'm gonna say I think Wolverine is like zero five three. So he's I'm gonna five, say like yeah, something like that. I'm gonna say like Cyclops. No, he's zero five two. Hmm. Oh man, Calder, you didn't let me know that Simeon was good at this. I'm so, should... I'm, yeah. I well, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> every <a> time, master, <laughs> so <laughs> every single time you go to a 300 modern tournament, you see 18 million Wolverine and Cyclopses. So on one team. All right, fair no, enough. Yeah, fair enough. I haven't actually gotten like a single point against Calder since we've done Bad Samaritan. Yeah, that's true. I re- I entirely rely on the. Uh, the guest well i mean you have to because i simeon i know that you and i do the exact same thing which is let calder win because he needs that because he has nothing else in life like he needs to win you know other people you can be you know they'll they'll rebound just fine but calder it's like it cracks a little you know i'm gonna say <laughs> it's just dead silent not I even that i hate you Chris. i just want to I, I have no words i just want to be loved wow uh, mm, that that'll never happen. Survey yeah, says. I, <laughs> I accidentally hit the button like four I times, and it's yeah. Okay, well we'll move on to clue number two. Which Give me a number. Be number fourteen. Number fourteen. Opening attack power. Opening attack power is blades, claws, and fangs. Man, that is Super a or chase at Blades, Claws, Fangs. The only chase it could be, I think that would have Blades, would be Tigra from AI, since that had a lower set number. So I'm yeah, going to go, go with her. See if you're trying okay. to cross a curveball, giving us a chase or something. All right. All right locked um, in with uh, Tigra, and we'll go to Simeon. What's your lock in? Well, I can rule out TMNT, because that was a small set. Um, man, there's so many sets. Earth X zero five four. 
with Turn blades. Evil super rare that could have blades. It'd be like Venom or something. Would be one of the few yeah, super rare. So you'd be looking it. at. There was no blades out there in blades. We forgot to say this earlier, obviously, listener. If you would like to play along at home, pause the podcast, see if you can come up with a guess. It's obviously going to be better than Calder's, and then you can press play and see <laughs> if you win. I just got to get through this one. Oh, you this. know what I'm going with? <laughs> I'm going with Robot Minotaur. Robot That's Minotaur. The All animated right. series. Locked yeah. in Robot Minotaur from uh, Simeon and Calder said Tigra. Survey said. <laughs> we will move on to clue number three, gentlemen. Give me a it's, number. It is going to be number ten. Number ten. Name of special power. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so this is top dial, and I'm gonna go with Batmobile lost a wheel and the Joker got away. It's the holiday Joker. <laughs> it's the Christmas Joker. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, 054 <laughs> Batman animated series. Uh, okay, all right. All right, all right. Locked in. Survey says. My so only other know. option so was doesn't even get a jing- Jingle Bells, <laughs> Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. He has two special powers, top dial. Dang it. All right, that was, oh, that <laughs> that so was going so well. I was like, yeah, no one would ever think that the Joker would have blades, claws, and fangs, right? That Let's name special me. powers. Dang it. Okay. Oh, that's right. so good. All right. One point to Calder, that's the right. sexy ranch hand. We'll move on to figure number two. Give me a number. Uh, the clue is going to be number two. The clue is number two. That is point value. Point value is 300 points. Ooh. He's a big boy. It's at their most. It's tree hunted. All right. 300 points. Um, that's a lot of people from recent stuff. I'm going to say Wendigo because he's 300 points. He's uh, he's a snowy man thinking Chris is in the Christmas mood. So maybe <laughs> picking a snowy, snowy creature guy. No, I just rolled a random number generator and landed on Holiday Joker. It was really weird, but it worked <laughs> out. All right. All right, we're locked in for Wendigo, the Beast of the North for Simeon. What about you, Calder? I am going to go with Bastion. Bastion. Oh, sticking with the Sentinels tonight. I got it. Got it. All right, survey says... <laughs> move on to clue number dose. Mm. Number 12. Number 12, any special combat symbols? Why, yes. This character has Colossal. Oh, and also Indom. Okay. So it's not a power cosmic colossal, which is nice to know. Uh. And no flight, right? Negative on the flight. Okay. He's a walkie. Walkie boy. Indom, 300 point man. Uh, does Eugene have a 300 point dial? I think Eugene goes. Uh, I know Juggernaut goes 300. I know. Man, there's so many. Um, I'm going to go with Ghost Rider, the Mammoth Ghost Rider, because I think he tops out at 300, and he is not Power Cosmic. That's right. Okay, locked in with Ghost Rider. I will go with the Juggernaut. Okay, locked in with Juggernaut. Ghost Rider, by the way, is sitting in front of me. That is is a a dang good guess, Simeon. Services! (laughs) is neither one of those, gentlemen. We'll move on to clue number three. It is going to be number 14. Number 14 is opening attack power. It's naked. Naked. Ooh. That's interesting. I feel like... Uh, so Eugene definitely has like a quake. He has the special quake, um, yeah. There's naked so many, but... 300 points. We can scratch out like Van Weeden and the other dragon because they fly... Most of the sentinels fly. Yeah, we don't even we don't even really know what set it's in though. So so it could be we we don't know, but it could be Thor. It could be you know, AI or it could AI. be Thor. There's yeah, there's a lot of options for that. Um, but top dial three hundred means. Ooh, so it's it could not be a frost be, giant. Could be a frost giant. Mm, 
I'm not sure if they have an attack power top dial. I do think that they top out around 300, maybe 400. If only there was one sitting on my floor, if only. still in the plastic, with an eyesight that I could <laughs> go to. Man, Alas, this is so tough. I, <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Kamala has some kind of special or some kind of weird attack power on her top dial, but she might cap at 300. Ooh, I know Surter and Man God go way beyond that. So does yeah. Carnage. <sighs> then there was the Floor Colossus. He might have nothing. I know Norman has girl. Quake sometimes. Giant girl. She tops out at 300. She do. Uh, or does she top at, at 250? I don't she know. Tops, one tops out at 250. I don't know if the other one tops out at like 200 <clears> or 300. <throat> but one does top out at 250 because there's 25 clicks on the dial. I'm going to go with Frost Giant just because I'm I'm stuck on this theory. That there's some there's some icy Christmassy uh, snow stuff. A theme going on. A theme yeah, with yeah. the holidays. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll stick with the frost giant on Simeon's last guess for this figure. Calder. On the off chance you choose a tree for the holidays, <laughs> I'm gonna okay. s- I am gonna say. I mean, that's so, a valid thought process. Because I think <laughs> both Groots go over it, so I'm going to say Flora Colossus. Okay. Locked in, Flora Colossus. Survey says... <laughs> I get my first point for the night. That is uh, G025 from the X-Men set, Iceman. Oh, oh. Iceman! Ah! Oh. Forgot about that guy. Okay. Yep. You were so close, Simeon. You were so close. You're like, hey, there's a theme going on, Frost Giant. I don't know why I went Frost Giant. Uh, you know, I talked myself out of the X-Men set. I was like, maybe he's looking back further. Maybe he's yeah. not going with like the new stuff. And, no, you know. I was super lazy. Super lazy. Also, I totally thought that Iceman went to 400. So. <laughs> Aha. Yeah, that's... Unless I accidentally clicked the wrong one. Let me check. Make 100%. I, I'm pretty sure he goes 100, 200, 300. Do do do, yeah, Ice 50, Man. Yeah. Yep, 300 yeah, points. Okay, I, did, I didn't accidentally mess up. I have messed up in this game before. <laughs> Doesn't oh, matter. We'll move on to figure number so three. Tough. It you is going to be clue number 19. Number 19. 17 through 20 are free plays, so they can choose the commonly chosen things, like opening damage power or generic keyword. What would you like to know mm, about mm, this figure? Yeah. Uh, does set sound good, Simeon? Set, huh? Yeah, I think I think set's all right. That one's not allowed, guys. You guys are cheating. <laughs> all right, set. Uh, we are going to go with R.I.P. Undead. I'm gonna have to go with Jacob Marley. Okay. Yeah. Um. Locked in with Jacob Marley. Well, <laughs> I'll go. I'll go with the. Uh, Ghost of Abraham Lincoln, because he's also in that set. Okay. All right. Locked in with the Ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Survey says... <laughs> what? What? And, uh, yeah, you oh, thought. No. I know. You're what disappointed. What a curveball, you? this guy. <laughs> okay. That was, I mean, that was on the nose. On the reindeer nose. Clue number two. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm working 10. on my dad joke. Number 10. <laughs> number 10, name a special power. This character does not have any special powers. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Well, since half the set is like generics that don't have special powers. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Skeleton. I'm going to no. go with uh, Generic Ghost. All right, locked in with a generic skeleton, generic ghost. Calder, how many skeletons are you up to now? I'm just curious. Uh, it's like, uh, let me check here. It's like 30 to 40 skeletons, I want to say. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, normal you skeletons, I have, army. Tw- I have 24 normal skeletons and 12 uh, skeleton champions, so it's 30 you know skeletons. Would, you know what would be awesome? We meet, what? we go to play. And you remember when we went to Origins this year, 
I somehow managed to collect like 50 Wakandan generic pieces. We make the Wakandans fight all of the skeletons. It would be one of the longest games ever. Totally worth it. Ooh, yeah, we should do it. All right, I'm game. All right, locked in generics. Survey says... <laughs> Let me have that last clue. All right. Number 14. Again, with this 14. Yep. Number 14, opening attack power. It's precision strike. Hmm. Precision strike. Uh, so, like, a couple of them have switch clicks. But it I would be their don't number, think... It would be their number one dial. Yeah. Correct. Man. I think See. we can rule out both <sighs> skeletons, right? Yeah, we they both they have uh, skeleton. They have the blades. normal one has none, and then the champion has blades. Um, okay. See, my line of thinking for the skeletons though was Nightmare Before Christmas because I know Chris oh, yeah, likes yeah. that movie, and it would be the only other tie besides Jacob. Um, who else was in that? There was a werewolf in that. That one chick was like a Frankenstein creature. Sally. Oogie Boogie is not in the set. Uh, huh. I don't know if... Yeah, I don't think Frankenstein's monster has precision strike. Nah, he's got like super... Uh, you know what? I bet Death and Grim Reaper do. Or uh, one of them does. Death has it, so I will say... Death. Death definitely has a precision strike. Alright, okay. I'm gonna go with Grim Reaper just to double our odds. Double it. Alright, locked in. Grim Reaper for Simeon Death for Calder. Survey says... It is indeed zero sixteen death. Yes. That means uh, Calder got two points. You win. Woo! Woo! We did it. So ask be happy ask me you. right now what ask me right now what your prize is. What's my prize? It's this sound bite. I'm not scared. I'm scared. You better choke me out, Alex. Please. <laughs> it only takes like twenty seconds. It only takes like twenty seconds. You better choke Alex, me out. Alex, please. I love that. I love it so much. <laughs> oh. Thank you all so right, much. Well, truly the best gift of all. <laughs> Simeon, Alex, remember, you know your gift okay. next year is uh, is winning Bad Samaritan. Don't forget that. Remember to catch Yeah, me. I'm looking forward to it. I'll, push, I'll put that coupon in the mail like December 24th next year. There's a rebate. <laughs> Make sure Santa gets it on time. All right. Well, that finishes up Bad Samaritan. Before... We start community. I want to remind you guys and gals that Dial H for Heroclix works off the value for value model. If you think that we give you value in your life somehow, don't ask me. Some people believe it, though. Uh, then you can go ahead and jump on our <laughs> Patreon. Uh, we have all sorts of cool new things up there. I kind of tweeted this out and then put it on Facebook. that This is like the best month to join. Our giveaway for this month is going to be a full set of mansion rings for first place. Second place is going to be good old Robbie Reed in the H dial. And then I looked and redid some of the tiers. We're giving away action tokens and stickers and all sorts of fun stuff. So go ahead. You know, as little as a buck a month uh, it's really helps out and keeps the podcast going and the cost down for everything. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. There's going to be a link in the show notes if you want to support us on Patreon. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens! So, Samina is going to go ahead and read off the answers on Facebook. I will read the ones on Twitter. This Community Tuesday's question is, it's the season of giving. What is your favorite gift to give or receive when playing? Simeon, what is, what is your answer for this? My favorite gift when I'm playing against someone is... Like when I've got that 17 defense and they're like, I'm pumping the numbers up, you know, I'm, I'm an 11, I'm going 12, I'm going 13, I've got a 14 attack. And you're like, cool, you need a three. And they roll that magical, that impossible, like low roll. The only roll that'll miss. That's the gift I like getting. When it's just like the odds are stacked completely in their favor and somehow it's still doesn't go their way that's like that's the just just warms my insides when that happens when someone is totally crushed by their dreams wow that, you must be, that's you must uh, be a joy to play against <laughs> that is I the am, gift that keeps on giving gentlemen yeah. right there <laughs> no like more realistically like when they need like a five and they roll a four or when they need a four <laughs> and they roll a three 
but if they do crit miss, you know, that's always that's always a happy thing too. Um, but the gift I like giving is like I I just love this when I I build a team randomly, you know, like it'll be like 30 minutes before it's time to play, and it's 400 points. I'm like, oh no, gotta throw something together. So I'll throw a team together that I think might work, and I'll get there, and the first person I play against, they're playing like Batman family. And so they're all in stealth and I'm playing like a shield theme team with no one that sees through hindering. And so I've got all this range and no one to shoot at. I just, I love giving that gift to people when I accidentally build a bad team and it's like a bad match, not necessarily a bad team, but when like they just have a team that completely counters what I built for, that's what I like. That's my favorite. What a what a good gift. What a great gift. <laughs> what, Simeon. What yeah. Uh, like I stack team, like five outwits and they've got all power cosmic. That's fun. Right. Why not? You I don't like them. using this, this power. <laughs> Outwit is garbage anyways. Uh I really like to receive um pity from my opponents. So if I am losing, like this is a shocker. If I am losing a game, I really appreciate it. When they like maybe push their figure to death or something, and they like they kind of know I'm gonna lose, but like give me the points anyways. Uh, one time against. What if they shake your hand because they think you're conceding. Oh, I hate those people. Those people can go <laughs> die in a pit. Uh, you know, they're terrible people. People that think you're conceding just because you're losing that badly need to go do something I can't say on this podcast. We'll we'll end it there. Uh, but I really, uh, me after I, show. I will, I will tell you, I'll, I'll absolutely tell you after the show, Simeon, trust me. Um, no, but like they'll like reroll attack rolls or something like, or perplex my damage. Like I think just kite man was left one time and I'm like, I guess I'll try to punch the Colossus or whatever. And it's like, we only got two damage. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay. Uh, so the next turn perplexed at my damage. They broke away, got away from me. So I could attack <laughs> Colossus. And then I punch him, and I miss. They probably attack, and I hit, deal him like one. Doesn't kill him, whatever. But it's that small win, that that little gift of, of pity that my opponent. It's like here's a shred of hope in this game for some points. Uh, and what I really like uh, to give my opponent is a fun atmosphere when we play. Even if no matter how like competitive it is, I want I want it to not feel like a game where it's like Shh, don't talk to me. I gotta really concentrate and do whatever. You know, I want it to be light and just fun, so I try to, you know, kind of talk, BS a little, whatever, just to have fun, I'm not doing it to try to distract someone, I'm just like, let's have fun, and I really want it to be fun, I don't want it to be like the Emily Michelle, let's have fun, and then I vulture your team in two minutes, you know, that's not a call out, Emily, I love you, I love you, you know, you're awesome, but like, How I just want it to be like, what's that, about like one of the greatest people ever, I know, but, um, I, yeah, how dare you, Boulder, how dare, I know, I'm a ter- I'm take someday. that back, <laughs> oddly enough i won't though uh because it's true it's true I, anyways you know pl- after playing vulture and having vulture played against me i will definitively say it's not fun either way <laughs> no <laughs> when it goes well the game's just over and when it doesn't go well the game's just over <laughs> so but yeah i just want to like make it fun you know joke around a little bit you know hero clicks doesn't have to be serious if you don't want it to be so that's that's the gift i try to give uh chris answer for this so i think my favorite thing that people can give me and this is a actual true gift is because you have to be really invested into the game in order to do this and that's really high point games Right. You, like I know most people are playing 300 to 500, you know, every once in a while. But give me a 2000 point game. Yeah, we're going to be there a while, a long time. But it is the most fun playing this game, because after a while, even if like most people are generally like, e- even if you're pretty competitive, after a while, the competitiveness even dies out inside of the game. You're just like, I just want to see if I can do dumb stuff. So at that point, now you're not even playing to win. You're playing to just see what kind of stupid stuff you can make happen in a game, which is how you like go back to – Calder, remember when you played at Origins um, with John Carl? And yeah. like this, 
the stupidness that occurred in that game where we played with Eternity, Infinity, and the Living Tribunal, and like we randomly brought back one of them. It was like Eternity with the Living Tribunal's tribunal thing. And I was like, this doesn't even make any sense. This is so stupid. But this wouldn't have happened unless you're playing really high point games and you have to be invested into the game. Like, yeah, going into it knowing I'm going to be doing this a minute because it's like 2,000 point game. That's my favorite. So when people are willing to sit down and spend four hours playing one game, that's the best. I really enjoy that. Right. I agree. No, oh, that is fun. I don't I don't get to play enough big point games anymore. Uh, to read through them all, I only got five on Twitter, so it'll be fairly quick this week. Citizen Chris Kurtz says, I like to give action tokens and receive uh, G002 Sentinels. What a guy. That's a nice gift. Yeah. <laughs> Citizen Peter Marshfield says, favorite gift to give is points for every time I was dumb enough to play Mistress Death. Before there was a point cap. Favorite gift to receive is my opponent planning to hit one of my figures and needing a four, rolling a three, followed by a crit miss. It happens way more often than I will actually admit. Right on. Uh, Next up, Isis Effects. My favorite gift to give is reminding people of the powers their character has to help them out. If it ain't worlds, I'm not going to be one of those, hey, you didn't declare it kind of guys. I agree, absolutely. And even then, it's like, hey, you got to shape change. You know, you got to roll it. You know, reminding people they have powers is a very important, important part of the game. Yeah, I'll just stare at them until they remember. Like Jeez. ten minutes will go by, and I'll it's be like, like I'm terrifying. attacking you, and then I just like lock eyes, and like ten minutes goes by, and then I'll say, roll your shape change. <laughs> if they don't roll it before, I'm not gonna remind them because I'm not mean. I'm just thorough. It's really David weird because he, he does that, like, staring at them until they remember thing after the game is even over. Like, he follows them out <laughs> to their cars. Yeah. And he's just, like, still going. And, it, and he thinks it's not creepy, but I'm just letting you know. I'll be the one. I'll take the bullet. It's it was creepy. Really weird. It was really weird. You started massaging my knee under the table until I rolled for shape change one time. And I'm just, I'm pretty sure that's harassment. You know, I don't know if you're making that up or not because... That sounds like something I might try and do. <laughs> so, like, we played a lot of Battle Royales. Uh, the day might have gotten really long, and it might have gone to my head at some point. So, I hope that was made up. Was, David G. Geez. Gaffney says, The gift of tokens via in-cap. Not changing the subject, but... <laughs> <laughs> Michael Fedor on Twitter says, Giving probability control. Giving probability control? I guess. Oh, you mean, like, to help them out? Or you're like, no, you don't get a hit. It's fine. The world no, I, I know that you know. rolled double sixes, but here, re-roll that. Oh, it's a double ones? Oh, that's cute. Or maybe he's playing uh, EarthX Captain America oh, ooh, and letting yeah. him re-roll that after sucks. he gets KO'd. That's a rough feeling. Next yeah. on Facebook... Jeez. Superhero organist Robin Cave says, I'll give pieces to my friends all the time if they're characters I just don't use or care about. Going up to super rares and LEs, I specifically recall giving my friend the Red Black Lantern Harley Quinn. He loves to play Red Lanterns. My other friend loves to play Black Lanterns. And I'm here thinking she will do much more good for them than it would ever do for me. I've got a super rare Adam Warlock waiting for some new player who might actually recognize him. On that note, I have a large box of excess common uncommon pieces just waiting for someone I end up teaching the game. I'm sure they'll give someone the same great start I got, if not better. That's the way to do it, though, too. I mean, we all kind of know that a lot of people get into this game by stumbling into a shop and they're like, what's that as people are playing? And then those people are just like, yeah, please come learn this game. Here's a bunch of free stuff. Like It's great. It's it's a wonderful aspect of the community that it's Heroclix because that does not, while it's so common in Heroclix, that's not common in a lot of other games that are out there, especially games that I've played in the past. Like people don't show up and randomly like hand you decks of magic cards and be like, oh, you want to play? Here is an entirely pre-constructed deck. They don't normally do that. I'm sure somebody out there has done that. But in Heroclix, yep, they just hand you random stuff. It's great. So good on you, man. 
Yeah, I, I, that's one of the few reasons I still buy sealed stuff. Is because, like, if I wanted to pick up just singles of all the figures I wanted from a set, it would cost me, like, a quarter of the price that I actually spend on a set. But I get a bunch of trade stuff, and I also get, like, this huge, like, catalog of, you know, for X-Men, I had all these colossals, I had all these, like, rares and super rares and stuff that I was just able to, like, give to people that, you know, either didn't want to spend money on them or... We're new to the game. Right on. Next up on Twitter is Vigilante Collectible, and he said a good pull. Don't we all just want that good luck when we open our boosters? Yeah. Never happens, though. Uh, James, <laughs> Craddock on, James Craddock on Facebook says, the gift of average rolls. You know, for, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction you roll high you gotta roll low that's just the way it be sometimes right on and vigilante jedi legend the last one here on twitter says giving of making it fun oh you didn't declare leadership role being your turn don't worry go ahead and roll it now kind of scenarios i'm always singing up and running them for the gang receiving a good game with good manners no i'm not about that no, I, I know. Leadership. I know. We all know. If you didn't roll leadership. You don't get that leader. If you like, you pick it at the beginning of the turn. Well, it's no longer the beginning of the turn. This whole game's over. And then I just I flip the game board because I don't play on maps. I play on boards. And I just like flip the Monopoly board that we're on. You know, Cyclops flies off a of park place. Game over. Now, see, I like to give people the gift of. The judge reoccurring at our table again and again. <laughs> so any any time someone messes up, judge, yeah, yeah, this guy, you need to you need to do something about this guy, because that's definitely the way you should play this game. I like the gift of seeing the backs of cards now. Uh, last but not <laughs> least, on Facebook, Tyler Murin says, the gift of re-rolling opponents' crit hits. In return, I love when I get hit onto a click I didn't know was coming, obviously for older figures. I also love when I'm given a blind booster and there's something awesome in it. It just feels better than when it's a pre- or better when it is a present. Right. I don't know. I've, I've very rare, very rarely given a, a blind booster as a present. Sometimes I'll be given like a booster where someone opened it and they were like, I already have all this and they'll give me that and i'm like i also have most of this so then i like pass the buck to someone else that's kind of like a fun little like tradition we have at local venues here where we all pass boosters like from one person until it gets to like the last person and they're like i'm new and we're like congratulations you have those (laughs) figures now (laughs) should have started with them hey it's the new guy (laughs) here Take all of this, please. I need room in my house. Ah, well, right on. Hopefully you guys all give the gift of receiving and giving, well, gifts this holiday season. Moving right along, we're going to have the gift of knowledge in this Jedi Legends Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. In 2020, don't be a dingus. Not every player is the same. There's a lot going on in the game. Help keep your fellow players. Uh, Commend them on good moves and keep a cool head. Play to win, but it's healthy to learn uh, losing too. Uh, Have fun! So yeah, just have a good time, guys. Keep that holiday spirit throughout the entire year when you're playing HeroClix. Well, that was a fantastic tip, I would say. Moving right along... It is, after all, Malcolm Rush's birthday, which will give either of you plenty of time for the happy Arabian birthday as we go into the Malcolm Rush question block. I can totally find That's it. in Japan! Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. <laughs> so, Malcolm Rush sent in a bunch of holiday Christmassy themed questions this week. We decided to hold them off until we were closer to the, you know, the day of the year. So we're gonna do them now. There are a lot of best, worst, favorite, and since there are three of us, one of us is gonna do the best, me, because I unironically clearly have the best opinion on what the best is. 
clearly. Simeon is right. going to do the Calder's worst. the best host. I am the best host. That's right. I'm going to do the gonna... worst because I'm the worst host. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, who wrote this script? Whoa. Just shut Calder, up. Read your lines. You can't slip this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's All okay right. if it's true. And Chris... The favorite, yeah, that's right. yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. no, so the, favorite, favorite, yeah, is the favorite. Hey, I actually have fun. The script, hey. I see this. Happy birthday, Malcolm! Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday to you! It's been five months since I heard that, and I forgot how ridiculous it is. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, so awesome! All right, let's do this. So the very first question is best worst and favorite christmas movie i will go first we'll do it in the order best worst favorite guys sound good the best is home alone period no doubt about it it is not only a great christmas movie that has nice feel-good feelings but it also has a little bit of action without drowning you out in action like die hard or drowning you out in feelings like one of 1800 hallmark movies besides that home alone is also the highest grossing christmas movie so i think that ranks it clearly as the best I like the video on YouTube that, like, explains why the wet bandits would have died, like, multiple times during the whole movie because of, like, all, like, the injuries that oh, they yeah. receive. That's oh one my of my gosh. favorite Christmas movies. The worst Christmas movie, I'm not going to say of all time, but of all time, is Elf. The Will Ooh. Ferrell. Terrible. Just, like giant sized man with a child's mind like yeah that's fun to watch in your <laughs> spandex i like that movie houses pouring syrup on everything just being in everyone's way and ruining everyone's day bye buddy hope you find Thank your dad <laughs> <laughs> all right i do like the claymation parts that was the but best other part. than that the worst part about a Christmas movie is when they have to bring belief back into Santa, who is clearly a real, like, phenomenon that is going on in the universe. Like, Santa is happening, but they have to prove it to people. If it's something that happens, you don't have to prove it. That's There's it, no man. I, I, there. I can't have you cutting on, on Elf anymore. It's such a good movie. That's it. Judge, oh. take care of this guy. Judge. <laughs> All right. Uh, my all right. favorite Christmas movie of all time, and this is debatable, but fight me in Roblox. It's going to be Nightmare Before Christmas. It's a Christmas movie. What's this? Yeah, that's a good favorite. What's this? That was a tie for my my favorite Christmas song was uh just what's the entire this? soundtrack. Oh, just the entire yes, yeah, so yeah, because yeah. the the entire soundtrack is good. That's what's weird. Whoever. <laughs> Actually, I don't know who wrote that, but they did a fantastic job. It's so good. All right. Uh, moving on, the next category is going to be Christmas song. The best Christmas song, without a doubt, is Jingle Bells. Also, because it appears in over 300 Christmas movies, man, that is a lot, and it is the most played Christmas song in uh, how do we like malls and stuff? Retail workers. They, they hear Jingle Bells. It, it's, it's a tie between that and Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas, but I'm going yep. to say to Jingle Bells instead. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you're wrong. It's Mr. Grinch. But the worst Christmas oh. song is just all of them. They're all <laughs> They're all cheery and jeery. And, Why? You know, just they pound your skull. And they Judge always... This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Bailiff, take him out of here. All right. Thank you. All right. My Order. favorite Christmas song this season. I've had multiple favorite Christmas songs over the years. But my favorite holiday Christmas song this year is Jeff Foxworthy's 12 Days of Christmas. Because I had never listened to that song until this year. And it is so stupid, it makes me laugh. And I was like, huh. All right. The parts to a Mustang GT. Let's do this. All right. Here we go. Uh, I do want to shout out one of my favorite, uh, but Ahmed's Jingle Bombs is a hilarious song, if you're familiar with Jeff Dunham at all. I, I quite enjoy that from time to time. <laughs> Moving on. Best, worst, and favorite Christmas present you got from past years. So obviously, we don't have a scale to really tell whether or not that is clearly the worst from our past, so we're just going to assume everybody is being honest. 
Uh, I will go first. Best, I can pretty much unironically say. Uh, the best is the computer I'm using to record this podcast on. I had had a really terrible computer for the past couple of years, and last year I got this computer, and it's been working like a charm ever since. So this has to be the best. Worst, mm-hmm. Simeon. The worst okay. Christmas present. Wow, well, you know, like, I hate to say a gift is bad, but it's it's you guys. It's the oh, customers geez. that come in on Christmas Eve, and they make me work through overtime, and I'm there all night, all day, the next day. You know what retail is on Christmas? It's it's terrible. It's the so, opposite of Christmas. That. That is the worst Christmas present. <laughs> there, there's a listener who's, like, really vibing with what Simeon is saying. He's like, this guy gets it, though. No, if you've never, like, it's if kind you've of true, worked though. retail season... And I'm not talking about like a seasonal worker. I'm talking about like someone who's like three years in and it's like coming up and you're like, oh, God, it just never ends. It always is on the horizon. And the closer you get to Christmas, the worse people's moods get, which is insane because I worked in retail for almost like nine years. And it's true. Some people, they're always just genuinely happy. But the closer you get to the actual Christmas day, the more stress people are under to find that thing that they needed to buy four months ago. But they were just lazy, generally speaking. And un- Unless it's one of the situations where it's like their kid just changed their mind yesterday and was like, I don't want that. I want this instead. And then the parent's like, oh, I got to go get it now. And that was those were never fun times because there's still a lot of yelling. Uh, the fav- my favorite Christmas present that I have ever received is a little bit of a cheat answer because it was multiple years running, uh, and that is I have done a very valiant job, I would say so myself, of collecting Avengers comics, um, and I have this whole list of like the numbers that I need of which volumes and things like that, and usually I can just for Christmas hand my mother the list and say, this is what I still need. And she will go on to, uh, probably don't want to plug another website, uh, but she'll go on to this website that she goes on to, and she just fills it with the things, and you know, how much money she wants to spend of all of the different issues, and I'll get generally like this huge stack of Avengers comics of just issues that I need. And it's been like, I, I've, I've accumulated like 600 issues of Avengers Ooh. that way. So it's, like, fantastic. No duplicates. It's just 600 issues. Now, I'm missing a lot, but I'm getting there. One of these days, I'll have them all done. All yeah, right. I know. Quick. My so comic quick. collection is pretty good. Yeah. Is it? Is it, though? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it used to be. I used to have this app that, like, updated every time I, like, updated my pull list. Oh. And it said, like, all the new stuff I had. I haven't updated in like seven years though, so. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I know a quick side tangent here though. Uh, as I was shopping with my dad this weekend to pull it back there, I was like, "Hey, can we go in the comic book store really quick? Maybe find something that I might want." He's like, "You still like all that crap?" I'm like, mm, "Yeah, I mean." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, Anyways. Dad, and I still like you too. <laughs> you should have called the judge on him. That would have been the only way to shut that down. Oh, goodness. Anyways, moving on, uh, getting into my favorite category, best, worst, and favorite Christmas food. The best is gingerbread cookies. It's only bad if you are a terrible cook. If you go and get them from the old lady in your life or a really, I don't know, good local store, gingerbread cookies, because it's the really, it's truly the only seasonal thing. You know, ham and turkey, you get those on any other holiday, Easter, Christmas, you know, thanksgiving whatever but gingerbread cookies those are the best that's so funny you said that because jaylene and i just made gingerbread cookies tonight and they're they're so so amazing exactly well you're wrong but that's fine oh okay simian i mean it's clearly i'm not gonna say you know it's clearly better but i mean it's clearly the uh those like pickles that are wrapped in Cream cheese and oh, geez, you're so salami. Funny. Those are Ew. those are so delicious. Anyhow, give us, give us your worst. <laughs> Is that your answer for worst? Because no, no, know, that's, that's, a, that's a good answer oh, for worst. Pickle roll-ups are the most delicious Christmas food. That's the only time I get them. The worst Christmas food, bar none, 
this fruit cake. I don't know who like decided to like, you know, bake a cake and then just shove all these weird gooey odds and ends and just like I don't know. I don't know I, how you made it taste so bad. I feel like it would be the bridge that would do something like that. Jedi Legends, yeah, you, let us know. I like that, yeah. I'm uh, sure it like did. they were bad. like they were like figgy pudding fruitcake. <laughs> these are our like staples for the holiday. And, you know, like, they were like, why not make this, like, cake not only not sweet, but in order to sweeten it, you have to have, like, weird nuts and berries just jumbled in there and some weird, like, mishmash. So there's no there's no texture. There's no, like, consistency that makes any sense. It's like eating through a minefield. It's terrible. I just looked it up. I was guessing fruitcake is a cake. Made with candy or dried fruits, nuts, spices, and optionally soaked in spirits. In the United Kingdom, certain rich <laughs> versions may be iced and decorated. Call it. Yep, yep. You can't trust the French just or the the British. You can't trust them. They do, do things like make. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. But listen, we're just talking. We're just ragging on the British right now. The real sorry, reason. Jedi legend. You all made fruit cake. You're not to be trusted. This is why George Washington crossed the Delaware on Christmas Day. <laughs> because he, he was like, they, they've already ruined Christmas enough. Like, <laughs> I wasn't going to attack them on Christmas Day, but... but this abomination! This oh, Did you but. eat this? <laughs> okay, so my, like. my favorite, favorite Christmas food is... Um, my mother makes this for me every year. It's tradition. It's super simple. It's peanuts with melted chocolate on top of it it's allowed to harden and then it just turns into a, like this weird chocolate peanut cookie it's amazing fantastic i love those i i, I love those so much i don't know uh if but a lot of supermarkets will just have those with like a scoop and you just put them in the bag those are honestly so good i could eat like entire bags at a time if i just hate myself enough and just oh i could eat so many of those they're so good the chocolate covered peanuts oh i could eat a whole oh. bag of pickle roll-ups because they're Shut delicious that's so nasty <laughs> Judge! Have, you never, have you never tried it <laughs> no. my mother makes them every year and puts them on a little oh, I, I delight the british me. made that too i, I delightfully reach over there. and grab a deviled egg instead and anything uh. but that uh moving on number five best person favorite hero clicks that relate to christmas in some way the best is the toy soldier because he's so freaking awesome he has a soldier keyword, which makes him amazing, period. And he spits out so many of the other toy soldiers in setting up the rifle line. And all their enhancement just makes him go, boof, boof. It's like a tank. These toy soldiers, they, they play so thematically with how the, like you think of toy soldiers and like the Nutcracker and whatever. So just the toy soldier is the best. Uh, it's kind of tough because all of them are rated about at four stars that have the Snowfall uh, team ability. So... But I just have to go with the toy soldier, period. Simeon. You know, Who's... toy soldier's not too bad. Uh, sticking with Snowfall, let's go with a, a figure that's got seven range, three lightning bolts, starts with running shots, it's got the sharpshooter team ability. These are all great things, right? You know, that sounds yeah. that doesn't sound too bad, right? Let's say you get hit for, oh, I don't know, like four damage, and now you've gotten an eight attack. How cool is that? Eight attack, two damage, 16 defense, leap climb. That's real cool. We're talking about the holiday elf. Yeah, he can climb up to your rooftop and shoot at you, but by the time he gets there, Wolverine's going to punch him in the head. It's like, it's done. He's game over before he even <laughs> begins. I've tried to field this thing. Great, he's got wild card. What's he going to use? Nothing, because he dies instantly every game <laughs> he never sticks around he's got improved movement for characters and he's got like a special attack power that i've never even managed to be able to attack with because i don't put tk on this team and i should but man holiday elf looks so cheery and he's so awful that's all i gotta say about him okay fair enough right. my my favorite uh hero click related to christmas is krampus because he steals children, and that's pretty hilarious in this game. Sounds like something you would do, Chris. I'm going to stick to that one, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
All right, right on. Uh, best worst favorite sculptures for a Heroclix character that can relate to Christmas in some way. The best sculpt, even though he is a terrible figure, and I do agree with this, but it's the Holiday Elf. He has a really sweet sculpt with the uh, the chimney with lights, the snow, and then the bow and arrow and the beautiful Christmas colors. Besides that, his entire dial, his base is red. I'm not saying the dial is good. I'm saying the sculpt is really good. <laughs> you know, you're not wrong. That's why I put him on the team one time. <laughs> one time. His entire, his entire experience with this figure, why he hates it so much, is based off of one experience. Yeah, never play him again. Absolutely not. One and done, that's what I always say. You know what else is one and done? Jacob Marley. He died once and should have stayed that way. This guy's got, he's got Ghost Realm. You know, like, that's great. He can carry people that also have Ghost Realm. Cool. How many ghosts are you playing? Zero? Probably. So you're playing Jacob Marley, and, uh, you know, the sculpt is super boring. He's just, he's a ghost. That's it. It's just a, it's just a guy with, like, crazy hair and some chains, but he's all clear, so you can barely even tell. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all. That's all it is. I, I, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, the best is Krampus. He's got a stolen child inside of the bag. Oh geez. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah. We're oh, sticking with the um, human trafficking aspect yep. of it. Really, <laughs> really, really nailing that one. Krampus. Two children in his children. Bag, yeah. Yep, nailed it. Wow. <laughs> Moving on to what suggestions do you have to make a Christmas theme team? I always. Uh, go with basing it either off of a Christmas song or a movie. That is how I almost always make a theme team for Christmas. It's not a theme team, but it's a theme team. Wink. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a theme in your, if it's your theme and like you can like, you can work your way through it. Like this character is Ralphie. This character is the leg lamp. You know, like you can do that. This guy is the Red Rider. You know, you can. Yeah. These are the Wet Bandits. You know. If you can make that connection, then that's all the that's all the theme you need. That's right. Um, I like outcasts because the island of misfit toys. So Ooh. if you can find some people that don't really, they don't have like a place in their own universe, like uh, Nate Gray. That's the only one I can think of right now. <laughs> <laughs> so like okay. maybe people that have like no <laughs> keywords, like some of the Watchmen figures that have no keywords, or like sure. Nomad yeah. or uh, Static. Off the top or of my people head, who like don't break theme like uh you know like um Prez Ricard could be an outcast oh, yeah. even though people voted for him uh you know those people okay so I have two options for favorite easy one just go with some of the uh it, it was the game that has swept the nation answers from earlier tonight you know we got death uh that's clearly Christmas related uh, as well as Iceman for the ice you know you could go that route or and this is my favorite answer human trafficking krampus all right so oh, capture is an option in this game make an entire team around capture use krampus is like your your general of the team that's that's all you need and just call it christmas i'm sticky you can't get away and next turn i'm gonna put you in this bag and you're never gonna be seen again <laughs> The most terrifying Christmas character in all of Heroclix. <laughs> yeah, so capture ability. That's what I'm saying. Like, all right, it works. What, what Heroclix do you want to get for Christmas? Uh, for a Christmas present. Uh, I will start. I guess I've been starting the whole time. Um, the super like I like because I already own every Captain America. There's not a lot of figures I really want, but I I like the ones that kind of have lore next level lore to them so a few years ago way before i even started playing there was the sentinel captain america that was a normal sentinel like the first ever sentinels made but it was a repaint that was on ebay for a really long time or whatever and people like didn't know if it was an official product or blah blah whatever it was but i would really like to own specifically like that one that repainted captain america sentinel that kind of started the whole people wanting it sort of thing and how they eventually made a normal sentinel cap sentinel so i would really like that og thing that started all the the who who done it sort of in the air nice yeah uh i'm in the same boat as far as like 
I have mostly what I want. Like, I don't really... If it's a figure that's not worth getting, I just don't get it. And if it's a figure that's worth getting, like, I go out of my way to get it, usually. Um, but there's one figure that I really want, but, like, price is just not what I'm willing to pay for. So that is Q Prime. Is the only Star Trek figure that I don't have out of all the sets and not worth playing that price, you know? And even if someone like gave it to me, if someone was like, like one of my family members was like, Oh, I listened to your podcast and like, here's this present. I'd be like, take it back. Like (laughs) do not pay that kind of money for this thing. Like it is not worth that. It is, but not for what I want it for. Like I literally just want it as a shelf piece. So I'm going to wait about five years um, but the present that I really want is the 2020 spoilers, man. Do I just want to see all the dials already? Like that's all I want for Christmas is just to like, see, see a bunch more fantastic four stuff, get it like a sneak peek. Like what point value does Galactus have? Don't even show me the dial. Just give me what his point values are. That's what I want. I, I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on that one too with Galactus because that would be pretty insane. I I need to see that. And then the two previews that they did give us for the Fantastic Four. I was super excited about that. Oh god, I can't wait to buy that. Um, what hero clicks do you do I want for a Christmas present? Um, so obviously I would like the um, very limited run of the one million BC. Avengers Phoenix that they made um, because that's a thing that they did not make at all. Why would you not make that? (laughs) God! All right. We got, like, so many Phoenixes recently, though. Uh, Yeah, I know, right. But then they decided decided to skip the last one, the last one in the entire run. Uh, No, it's cool, WizKids. It's definitely not a downstairs. It's a downstairs mix-up, guys. It's a downstairs mix-up. Why would you do that? Um, that's what I would like as a Christmas present. Um, but in the realm of reality, uh, Thanksgiving, I was given a few days off, so I did come home real quick. And while I was home, I got a hold of my brother. I was like, all right, hey, come over. We're going to play Hero Click. So it's like hours away. Like He's coming over in six hours. And then I remembered, oh, my God, they made Orville Hero Clicks. So I called literally every single comic book shop in the Indianapolis area to ask them if they had them in stock. And, of course, no one had them in stock. So I checked Cool Stuff Bank. They don't have that in stock. Apparently, they made six of them on the planet, and I can't find one. <laughs> so that was that was pretty bad bad news bears. That's what I would like is, is the Orville starter set. Let's get someone to help Chris out. Get him that Orville starter set, guys. I'm um, <laughs> that's charity help. work. Let's get some mental help for Chris. Um, also, he that needs too. it because he wants the Orville. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love the Orville. I have the. I do have an Orville starter set. It's uh, sitting not too far from me. I could kick it right now if I stretched really hard. Oh, that's so nice. That's, that's I don't want to nice pull action. anything. Judge. Uh, judge this guy right here. All right. I stole it from your Christmas tree <laughs> along with your roast beast. <laughs> All right, Krampus. Uh, <laughs> literal Grinch, Simeon Bruce. Uh, number nine, which map would be a good Christmas type map to use? Basically, anyone that has snow on it. My go-to is Limbo Outdoor. That's the big snowy volcano. It's kind of like... Whoville, where the Whoville's got the big old mountain. You know, if you have a Yeti, it's a big old mountain. It's a big old snowy mountain. Come on, it's cool. It's neat. So I always go with Limbo Outdoor. What about you guys? Christmassy maps. So to stick with, like, the ice, like, because there's not, like, a lot of, like, holiday-themed maps, but if you want something snowy, I always go with Jotunheim Lake. It's from, like, the Thor... I don't know if it was the Thor Starter or the Thor LE set, but it's the ice map that does double knockback when you're on like the special ice squares. And so pretty much like 90% of the map, if you knock someone back, they're doubling their knockback and it's hilarious because there's all this blocking, all this elevated. So if you like outwit toughness and knock them back, then they're going to slide back into a wall and take more damage. Uh, 
nothing says Christmas spirit like shoving people into things. Well, that's my Black Friday spirit. <laughs> that's what that's what the Christmas spirit is to me as well, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I really have an answer for this one. I'm like, anything with snow on it's probably good an option. If there's a mall, that could be a thing. Just make sure that as you play, you take a boom box, put it right next to you, play Christmas music as you're playing as you're playing obnoxiously loud, and only Mariah Carey's music on repeat. I will, oh, I will forfeit the game. Christmas Somehow, Christmas. that is I all that I hear Last when I walk Christmas, into the mall. I gave you my heart the very next day. Um, gave it away. Any Justin this Bieber or... To save it from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Oh, Judge! No. <laughs> any Justin oh, Bieber no. or Taylor Swift oh, remake goodness. of a Christmas song. Those are good oh, options for Christmas. That's what I'm going to stick with. Yeah, play that on any snow map. That's basically Christmas. Well, guys, I think we really, really captured the holiday spirit with this <laughs> episode. And I think that kind of wraps us up. So if we don't have any uh, last words, Simeon, you can go ahead and read us out of here. You know, I think uh, let's, let's all just give them a, a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We should probably say that. Know, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> have a crazy Kwanzaa. Uh, uh, um, Kumbla, eight, Hanukkah. I don't, I don't know what Sandler, all that. Adam Sandler, something, something, Hanukkah. Yeah, eight crazy nights. Eight crazy um, nights. That's right. Enjoy family. Yeah. yeah. Um, and human trafficking is not cool. <laughs> you want to put that out there. Thank you. In case anybody Disclaimer. thought that I was being serious about that. Unless Krampus. you're playing Krampus, then it, Krampus is no bueno. All right, no <laughs> good. All right, and with that, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find all the cool stuff in stock every day. Need some last-minute gifts? CoolStuffInc.com, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products, except for the Check Orville. Them out, except for the Orville. But no one wants that for Christmas. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs> Happy trails. Bye, guys! Ma, ma, ma.